Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I will start off by introducing myself. My name is Mackenzie. I live in Missouri um, in a little town outside of Springfield with my husband. And long story short, I just wanted to start documenting my TTC journey. So for you, those of you who don't know what TTC is, it's trying to conceive. I have spent hours and hours and hours watching YouTube videos of people's TTC journeys, experiences with um, infertility, and basically just trying to gain as much knowledge as I can about, you know, all the tips and suggestions that people have in helping with fertility. So, um, long story short, I actually filmed this video already um, on my phone, and it was like 48 minutes long, and that is way too long, so basically I'm just going to condense everything I said and hopefully make it 15 to 20 minutes. So the reason why I wanted to start making videos was I realized how much all the videos I've been watching have really helped me, whether it's uh, support, realizing that I'm not the only one who uh, fears infertility and is having some issues regulating her cycle. There's a lot of people out there and there's a lot of people out there that have learned a lot through their experience and are kind enough to share that with everyone else, um, me included. So I just figured if me making videos on my journey helps one other person out there, you know, with them trying supplements that I've tried or, you know, different suggestions that I make and they do and it works for them, it is 100% worth it. So for anyone that is watching this, what is my hair doing? I don't know. Um, for anyone who is watching this who is struggling with infertility, whether it's been a couple of months or years, my heart completely goes out to you because I fear that that might be an issue that I'm going to have to face and um, it's definitely something that is really scary and really sad. So if you are struggling with that, bless your heart. Um, just keep on chugging and eventually you will have the best baby ever. So I'll just kind of start off. Um, I'm 26 years old. I turned 26 in September. So when I turned 26, I was actually kicked off of my mom's insurance and I saw that coming. Um, my husband and I have been married for a little over a year now and together for five years today, actually. So about six months ago, we started talking about when we wanted to have a baby and start trying to have a baby. And I'm very much a planner, so ideally I would like to have a baby anywhere from November to January. And the reason for that is um, that is actually the slow season in my work. So I work at a power sports company, so I sell motorcycles, side-by-sides, dirt bikes, ATVs, and just like any other vehicle company, we have a slow season. So ideally, I would have a baby during slow season, so that way I'm not missing out on a lot. Um, I'm not missing out on a lot, and they're not missing me uh, being gone. So anyways, the, woo, <laughs> I'm literally balancing my phone with a candle, and it's not liking it very much. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, that'll work. So that's a contingent plan. So a couple months ago when I was kicked off my mom's insurance, um, I actually stopped taking my birth control in August. And my birthday was in September. So a little bit of backstory on the birth control. I actually had to go back and think about when I started it. And I had been taking the pill for 10 years. That is so insane. Whenever I realized that, I about crapped my pants. I was like, that is ridiculous. That is a long time. So when I was put on birth control, it was because I had a very irregular cycle. I'd have maybe three or four periods a year. So to me, obviously, it wasn't a huge issue because, um, you know, I didn't have a period and that was great. I didn't have to worry about it. But on the same token, I never knew when it was coming. So that was pretty frustrating. And I knew that I really needed to have it. So my mom and I went to the doctor. They prescribed me birth control. At that time, they... Um, basically attributed not having a period often to me being so active. Um, so I played soccer from when I was little bitty all the way through my sophomore year of college. So every day I was physically active from anywhere from two to five hours. So 
you know, it made sense at that time and I really didn't think about the effects that birth control would have on me later in life until a couple of years ago uh, after, you know, I'd been with my husband for a few years. So, so long story short, about six months ago, I uh, kind of planned on getting off birth control a little bit before my period or before I turned 26, partially because the last few months I just got really bad at taking it, um, which might be why it was all messed up after I got off of it. So anyways, stop taking birth control in August. It is now January 8th and still haven't had a period. So basically everything that I kind of feared is becoming reality, which I sort of prepped myself for. So it wasn't as disappointing as it would have been had I not kind of done my research and prepared myself for the possibilities of struggling with fertility. Um, so you know, a couple months went by. Um, I waited about a month and a half because I figured, you know, 10 years taking the pill, it's going to take my body a little bit of time to recuperate and start realizing that it's going to need to do it on its own. It's not going to have a pill doing it for me. So, you know, a couple months went by. It didn't really make me too nervous because I figured it would just be normal. I did gain a little bit of weight after I got off uh, the pill and I got some, like, acne and that kind of stuff. So it was a little bit frustrating. I wasn't on my period. I gained weight. My face was all pimply and I hated it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. So long story short, when I turned 26, I got kicked off my mom's insurance. Um, I'm actually not going to be eligible for insurance until April. Long story short, there's a couple things in between there. But so what I've done was I started all my research. I watched, started watching thousands of videos, reading a bunch of articles online about what I could do to be proactive and get my body where it needs to be so I can have a baby. Um, so after a lot of research, I found a couple supplements that I could take. Um, the main one that I started off taking was uh, Vitex which Vitex is made from chastaberry, which is a fruit. And Vitex has been around for years. Um, and I read a lot of really great reviews on it, watched a lot of good uh, YouTube videos on people talking about their success stories of using Vitex. So, you know, I was getting really hopeful. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. You know, I found this supplement that could really help me. You know, I'm going to do it. So, I started taking Vitex, which let me get my little, I made a little timeline. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy. Like, my world has been obsessed with conception stuff for the last, like, three months. Um, ever since I kind of realized, okay, this could be a big issue. I just, my biggest thing was I wanted to be very proactive about it. I didn't just want to sit back and feel bad for myself and say, oh my gosh, what if I can't have a baby? You know, all these fertility issues. Um, what am I going to do? I just really wanted to do everything that I could to get my body to do what it's supposed to do. So, <clears throat> August, I stopped taking birth control, weight gain, acne. So, um, November, middle of November, I started taking Vitex. So, the Vitex that I got was off of Amazon. Um, I bought a big bottle of it. It's called Nature's Way. It was one that I saw a lot of people taking and they recommended um, so that's what I went with. Looks like this. This one came with 320 capsules and they're 400 milligrams a piece. So that leads me to my next point. I looked at the recommendation for dosage and it says to take one capsule two or three times daily for eight to 12 weeks. Thereafter, one capsule daily. So being 400 milligrams, it can, you can take it up to three times a day, 1200, 1200 milligrams. I figured I'd start off with two times a day, see how that, you know, worked with my body. Um, I'm not a super small person. I'm not like obese or anything like that. Uh, but I knew being a little bit taller, weighing a little bit more, uh, that my body would probably require the higher dosage than the lower. So started taking Vitex two times a day. Now, um, alongside that, I was doing a lot of research on what kind of like ingredients and nutrients that and vitamins and everything that would help my body prepare for a baby. 
Um, so there are an incredible amount of vitamins and everything that your body can utilize to thicken the wall of your uterus, um, help the mobility of the sperm, get in to the right place, um, with, help with egg quality. So I will make a separate video on all of those that I found. Um, I will list what it is and then I will list what the benefit, um, of that is. So, um, <clears throat> anyways, so I'll make a separate video of that. That was really helpful for me in picking out the right supplement. So basically what I did was I wrote down all of the um, vitamins, what they did next to it. I starred the ones that were really important for myself and how I felt like my body um, was acting. And then I went through probably 10 to 12 different multivitamin prenatals, looked at all of their ingredients, check mark next to the ones that had the ingredients that I wanted in it, and then basically picked the one with the most. Um, so that leads me to my next point. So mid-November started Vitex. Uh, December 5th, I started my prenatal. So the one that I picked, I also found off of Amazon. It's called Conception. It's a female fertility prenatal. Came with 60 capsules. It has a bunch of really, really awesome ingredients in it. Um, it almost checked off every one on my list, so it was a no-brainer. Um, Price-wise, I'll have to check. I think the Vitex was like $20, and then this prenatal was a little bit more expensive. I think it was like $25, um, and you take these two times a day, so basically it's a 30-day supply. So at that point, um, I had to look at how much I would take of each one because that prenatal actually does include some Vitex. Now, I couldn't really find uh, a milligram dosage of how much Vitex was in the prenatal, so I did a little bit of searching, and I found a lot of people saying um, per uh, serving of the prenatal, there was about 400 milligrams of Vitex. So I knew I was already taking 800 milligrams a day. I can go up to about 1,600, you know, depends on the person. So what I did was I started taking the recommended dosage of the conception, which is two times a day, total of 400 milligrams of Vitex, and continued to take two Vitex a day, total of 800. So I was taking a total of 1,200 milligrams of Vitex um, per day. I did that for a couple, I did that for about a week, and holy moly, I realized that my feet, my ankles, my legs were swelling. It was the weirdest thing. So obviously, dosage is really important. You just kind of have to play with it depending on what your body can handle, how it reacts to it. So uh, my body did not like the 1,200 milligrams of uh, Vitex total. My legs were swollen. My feet hurt so bad. I was like, oh my God, am I pregnant? Like, I don't know what's going on. So long story short, I cut my Vitex back by one. So I started just taking one Vitex a day, 400 milligrams, continue to take my conception two times or once a day, two capsules. Um, so a total of 800 milligrams a day in Vitex. And that helped tremendously. Swelling went back down, no big deal. So I started that about a week after I started the conception. So mid-December. Um, <clears throat> So, one thing to remember, with the Vitex, um, what it does, it basically just regulates all your hormones in your body, which at some point will lead to a normal cycle, ideally, okay? So, that's why I started taking the Vitex, was primarily to regulate my cycle. It's supposed to balance all your hormones in your body so that your body can do what it's supposed to do to have a period, Okay. The prenatal was just a bunch of other things to prepare my insides um, to maintain a healthy pregnancy once I do get pregnant. So it was important to start taking those. But the Vitex was a huge thing because I needed my dang period, okay? Um, and that is something you think you will never say because you grow up, periods are a freaking pain in the butt. So you're bleeding out of your vagina, you're moody, you have cramps, boobs hurt, back hurts, all of the above, okay? So obviously it's something you never want until you want to get pregnant. 
And then your period is like this precious thing that comes once a month and tells you exactly what's going on with your body. It'll tell you exactly when you're ovulating and it's great and you want it. Okay, so I want my freaking period. So I will do whatever it takes to freaking get that thing without going back and birth control. So <clears throat> it says that the Vitex um, usually will take anywhere from 60 to 90 days to really start to show you the benefits of it and hopefully regulate your cycle. So I hadn't seen my period, getting kind of depressed, um, but... The very end of December comes along and I start spotting. And that was so freaking great. I was so excited. I was jumping up and down. I was like, oh my gosh, Jerry, I think I'm starting my period. I'm spotting. Oh my gosh, this is great. And he was like, that's great, honey. Anyways, didn't actually have a full-blown period, but I spotted for three days. And you know what? After this long of not having anything, I was very happy with that. To me, that was my body's way of telling me, hey, it's working, like, give me a little bit more time and we'll get this figured out. So, <clears throat> I hope I end up having my period sometime soon. It would be great to know, one, that my body is doing what it's supposed to be doing, and two, it'll let me know when I'm ovulating. And you can't get pregnant without ovulating. So, that's going to be the biggest thing. So, <clears throat> Along with those two supplements, um, I also started taking two other supplements. So this is totally separate from wanting to have a period. Um, long story short, I have a friend who um, told me that, and I, I think this is right, it might be the opposite, but anyways, told me that male sperm cannot survive as well as female sperm in an acidic environment. So... Me and Hubs want a girl. I want a baby girl so bad I can't see straight. Would love a baby boy too. Any baby is fine. But really would love a baby girl. So um, at some point, a little over a year ago, this topic came up with me and her. And she's like, well, I can tell you how to have a girl. And I was like, girl, tell me that secret you talking about because I want to have a girl. So she told me um, basically it had to do with like urinary tract infections in order to prevent those you I believe have to make your vagina an acidic environment so um she said take two things take a cranberry supplement and acidophilus if I'm saying that right these two things together will create an acidic environment in your vagina and little boy sperms can't survive as well as little baby girl sperms um, so I started taking those together, um, right at the end of June, right at, let's see, no, right at the beginning of December, about the same time that I started taking the conception prenatals, I started taking those too. And they're not bad for you by any means. They're good for you. Um, the cranberry is a urinary tract health supplement and then the acidophilus supports digestive health so either way they're both good for my body they're not going to hurt me and if it helps me have a baby girl put it in me I'll eat it I'll drink it I'll swallow it I don't care what it looks like or smells like I'm taking it so those are the four things that I'm currently taking my Vitex and then my conception um, like I said, the conception prenatal on Amazon was about $25. I think the Vitex was right around the same price. Uh, if you're wanting a baby girl and you believe what I believe and I don't care if it's a myth or not, uh, cranberry from Walgreens, I think was like five bucks and the acidophilus was the same thing. Now, side note, I am not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not telling you what to do. All I'm doing is sharing my experience and what I'm doing. And if you decide that you want to try it too, by all means, go for it. Um, we will see how it works together. So at this point, I am just hoping that these supplements will aid in getting my body back to normal putting me on a cycle, letting me have my period, and allowing me to find out when I ovulate so we know when to baby dance and try to have a baby. So we're not going to really, really actively start trying, trying until about February or March. Um, like I said, I'm a planner. Hopefully that puts me having a baby in a slow season. I know things don't work out usually how they're supposed to like this. So 
I'll take a baby whenever I can get it. But if I can choose, that's what it would be. Um, and it's also the off season of my husband and I's hobby, which my husband drag races motorcycles. And right now we're in off season. So, um, drag season, drag <laughs> different track. Okay. Sorry. Focus. Okay. So motorcycle drag racing season starts usually in about, uh, March, late February, and it goes until the first week of November. Um, that is a very busy time for us. We are racing. We, he is racing and I'm there, um, every single weekend, usually two days, sometimes three days, um, in the weekend. So very busy and, that was one thing too when we started talking about when we wanted to have a baby. Um, ideally, we both wanted me to be pregnant during race season. Sounds so silly, but um, with all the loud noises, like it gets them used to all the noises when they're inside your belly. So it's not as much of a surprise whenever you introduce it to them later. And also, you know, having a baby in off season of my work and off season of race season just kind of made sense for us. We'd have the most time to focus on the baby, which we will do anyways. We know it will change once we have a baby. We have to focus on that. Um, we're totally ready for that. But, um, you know, motorcycle racing is a huge part of our lives and we we are going to keep it a huge part of our lives. We just want to bring another little precious baby into this world to enjoy it with us. So, um, yeah, so long story short, um, I just wanted to start making some vlog videos, keep you guys posted, hopefully answer any questions you guys have. If you guys have any videos you want me to uh, make or you guys have questions, definitely ask me. If I have answers, I will absolutely give them to you. And if I don't, then hopefully we'll at some point figure them out together. I just really hope that my journey helps someone else because there is such a large community of everyone out there who is struggling with infertility um, or they're just going through their trying to conceive journey and it's fun for them. And I love it. I've really enjoyed watching all the videos of even when people make a baby their first try. It's so awesome. Like, it's such a great experience, um, which I'm not, like, I'm not judging anyone who doesn't want kids. Um, one of my best friends doesn't, and I'm totally supportive of that. It's not for everybody. It's just really not. Um, but I'm so excited about it, and all I want in life is to be a mom, and I've always wanted to be a mama, and I am so incredibly in love with my husband that making a baby with him like makes my heart so happy and it makes me so giddy and I just cannot wait to have a little like a him running around oh my gosh and if it's oh my gosh oh, I think about it I get happy so he's a ginger got a little salt in it too so he's got a little gray hair but um he is a ginger and picturing having a little ginger baby girl I cannot handle like, it makes me want to cry because it's so cute. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Two of our best friends have a little ginger baby girl, and she just turned four, and she is the light of our lives. Oh, my gosh. She's so incredible. Um, So is her other baby, too. Not picking favorites, but little Peyton is our favorite. I just said that out loud. Sorry, Emily. We love you. Okay, so um, having a little baby with him, I, like, I feel like when you love someone... Like, imagining having their babies is so awesome. Because that, like, you made that together. And that little baby is part of him. And I love him so much. And I'm just, I'm so excited about the whole process. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, being pregnant is so miserable. Like, it's painful and all this stuff. And, like, I get that. And I'm totally accepting that. And I'm ready for it. Like, I'm ready from the beginning to the end. Like, I can't wait until we like actively start trying, trying, and I'm like crazy psycho wife, and I'm like, oh my gosh, we have to baby dance right now. Oh my gosh, this is my window. Ah, ah, ah. Let's do it now. Woo, camera. Okay. Woo. It doesn't like that I was freaking out. Okay. Sorry, phone. Um, but I cannot wait for that moment because my husband is so unlike me in the sense that like I'm very vocal about how I feel. Um, I show like expressions and all sorts of stuff, and he like, doesn't get super, super, like, noticeably excited about stuff, so it is hilarious how opposite we are in that. I'm very loud, and, um, 
I don't know, just goofy. And he's just like sits there and just like shakes his head and smiles at me like, oh my gosh, I married this and I love it, but she's crazy. She's totally crazy. Um, anyways, so it's going to be so fun to kind of see our two personalities like mesh for this one end goal. So I'm excited for the baby dancing part and like trying to conceive. And then, oh my goodness, the amount of videos I have watched on live pregnancy tests or like telling their husbands they're pregnant is unreal. It's ridiculous. Like someone needs to stop me. Don't stop me. Someone needs to stop me. Um, I cannot wait for that to be me. Like so excited to like take a pregnancy test knowing it's possible that I'm pregnant. Oh my gosh. So awesome. I cannot wait to find out that I'm pregnant. And then I can't wait to tell him, even though, like, like I just said, he doesn't show excitement. So I'll, I'll be, like, all sorts of crazy excited and, like, crying or, like, screaming or laughing. I don't know what I'll be doing. And, like, telling him and he'll, like, open the thing that I give him, whatever it is. And he'll just be like, that's so great. I'm going to be like, no, like, jump up and down with me. This is so awesome. So can't wait to do that, which I will film all this stuff, too. And then telling my family that I'm pregnant. Oh, my gosh. They're going to freak out. Same thing with my friends. Like... They know how badly I want this. So it is going to be such a fun journey. So just hang in there with me. Let's just like cross our fingers that it doesn't take forever and that it works out as planned. Um, but, you know, like I said, I'll take a baby whenever I can get one. Um, and then I just can't wait. Sorry, I'm playing my nose ring. It's weird. Um, and then being pregnant. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to be pregnant. Like, I totally accept that I... I have, there's possibility of morning sickness and being miserable. I totally accept it. Bring it on. I like want it all. I want the whole thing. I want the baby bump and the tight shirts that shows the baby bump. Otherwise, I wouldn't want to wear a tight shirt because got a little pooch right here. So, you know, you hide it unless you're pregnant. And you're like, oh my god, like my belly, but don't like, don't like fondle it. Like I don't want everyone to touch my belly, even though I feel like I touch everyone's pregnant bellies. But it's only people I know. They get that. That's fine. So can't wait to be pregnant. And then finding out if it's a boy or a girl. Oh my gosh. Someone control me now because that is going to be the best. And the thing is, is so many people are rooting for us, which makes my heart so happy and makes me want to cry thinking about it. All my friends are so excited for us to have a baby. Um, they know how much I want to be a mom. They're so supportive. And just knowing that I will at some point be able to tell all of these people that I'm pregnant, like, it's going to be the best feeling in the entire world. Um, and then, you know, being pregnant and then delivering a baby. Oh my gosh. Which is so weird because that part of it is something that usually turns a lot of females off from even wanting to have kids. One of my best friends is that way. Like, she wants a baby, but she doesn't want to be pregnant because she doesn't want to have it. I do. And same thing, like, the pregnancy announcement videos. I have watched way too many videos of, like, delivery vlogs. They're so amazing, though. It's so special. Oh, my gosh. I can't. I need to stop thinking about this because it's... I'm just going to get off here and go watch another, like, three hours of pregnancy delivery labor vlogs, whatever. Okay. So, um, anyways, that's kind of um, a semi-brief. It's not as long as the one I just recorded and deleted, but it's getting there, so let's cut this short. Um, I'm going to be making, hopefully, definitely at least one video a week and uploading, sometimes possibly two to three. I'm sorry, I'm getting over being sick. I sound really silly, but um, sometimes possibly two to three. Majority of them will be baby TTC related, um, but I will post some that are non-related. So like an example, which I guess is still kind of related, but I'm really into sewing and I just started learning like a little over a year ago. We're actually in my sewing room right now, so let's take a look the wrong way. <clears throat> so that armoire back there I got off of Facebook Marketplace for $25 and I turned it into my sewing armoire and it's incredible. Um, we got your sewing machine, my serger table that is um, hosting some Christmas presents that still need to be given to people. So um, anyways, I'll be probably making a couple videos on my sewing stuff. I've been really into making infant quilts lately because I've had a lot of friends that are having babies, which I'll mention 
all of them have been having boys and I'd made all these adorable boy infant quilts and I'm like mama wants to make a girl infant quilt so yesterday I went out and got a lot of girl material and already made one and it's so cute so like I need to have a baby girl like now okay so I'll make some videos on that um definitely probably some on the bike stuff so um, if you guys have any videos, like I said, if you want me to make any, if you have any questions, I can do a QA. and a um, you know, anything that I can help you guys with the TTC journey, I am all about it. Um, so leave any kind of questions in the comments. If you guys want me to do anything in particular, I'd be happy to. And my next video will probably be um, on the list of all of those vitamins um, and nutrients and everything I was talking about and then giving the benefit of each of those so that way you guys can kind of see what you think your body needs and maybe you can utilize that information to find a supplement that works really well for you so I will get off here I actually am going to a um, baby shower tonight for one of my friends since middle school who uh, married um, a man in the military and they've actually been living in Japan for I think over a year now but they're back in town she just announced she was pregnant uh she sent me a postcard on christmas and it's on my fridge and it's so sweet so i'll be going to that tonight so hopefully um another point this week i'll make that video and post it so i appreciate everything um that you guys will have to share and i hope that my journey helps you guys um because you guys are definitely helpful for me too i follow a lot of people on here that are great so Anyways, thank you so much and I look forward to spending some time with you guys.